Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about growing your summer squash and zucchini. I will link a video that shows you how I plant these. I did one last year and it really holds true. Just want to stress, when planting your summer squash, you don't need to do anything fancy. Loosen the area where you're putting in your transplanter seeds. I put in a handful or two of granular, organic granular fertilizer, mix it through. If you have compost, toss them in. But just kind of loosen up the planting area put your plant in. The whole key for most of your summer crops is really watering and I'm stressing that a lot this year. Keep your summer squash, summer squashes, <laughs> summer squash well watered. That means three times a week when the temperatures are in the 90s and it's sunny. Lots of water, happier plants. So these plants have been growing since really the beginning of May. It's uh, July 1st tomorrow seven eight weeks of growth from transplant they grow really really fast question number one how many should I plant for a family of two to six you really only need three plants it's easier to tend three plants you're gonna get tons of squash and zucchini how many plants are here two so on the right is my summer squash and you can see that I did put some dust down. That's insect dust. It's going to get washed off after this video. You put the dust to control beetles. You know, I wish, I wish it would help with squash bugs. Um, it helps a little bit. They're just notorious for your summer squash. Um, I'll go over that in a little bit. But put the dust on the outer leaves in the evening after the pollinators go away. Wash it off in the morning. Helps control different pests. I also get in and dust the stem area. That's where the squash bugs go. Also other beetles and problems. That does help. Notice there are no open flowers around there. You don't want to be putting dust on open flowers. The open flowers are up higher. There's no dust over there. But anyway, wash the dust off in the morning when the pollinators are coming in. And you can repeat this each night, but you only need a couple of nights of dust to control any kind of insect problems that may be crawling on the leaves. So this is a yellow straight neck squash, tons of production, and to harvest, you can cut it, the stem with a vine, or you can just give it a simple twist and it will come off. This is perfect size for salads, very tender. As they get bigger, the skin gets a little bit thicker, you know, okay for stir fries. If they get really large, the seeds start to get larger, harder to digest, maybe use them in stew. I'm going to pick all of these too in this video. Now this summer squash is a vine. You can see that it's vining out this way, it's vining out this way. Um, it probably might be, yeah, there's a vine right down there going that way. You don't have to prune those. A lot of people say prune it, you know, you'll get uh, better production. Uh, this is pretty good production from three vines. The reason you would prune is because you can't manage the size. By just taking care of one plant, there's one right here, and there's a zucchini over here. This is actually the end of the video, so I've pruned out these two plants, but I wanted to show you the final tip. As your vining squash zucchini plant moves across the ground, if it contacts the ground, it's gonna put out a new root system. Look how fibrous that is. I just pulled those up so I could show you. So as the vine is moving from the original area, it was planted, you know, right in there, sink that vine or set that vine gently down onto the ground, let it contact the soil, and it's gonna put out new root, new, yeah, new root systems. That will help protect you from the vine borer because if the vine borer gets down into the center, Damage is the stem, the vine right there by the roots. You could have another root system supporting the plant. So it's a great technique to have multiple vines, let them move along the ground, let them contact the ground, mount soil over it, and the plant will send out more roots. And I actually got that dust a little bit close to the flowers that open. The flowers sometimes open in the evening I mean, I'm sorry, within one day, so those are gonna open in the morning. Those are male flowers. I just don't want a pollinator coming near there. While we're over here, let me show you a problem that happens. So here's a zucchini that is green, and now it has a brown tip. I'm breaking that off. Let's take it out here. Soft. It didn't get fully pollinated, that's normal. That's not a problem with your plant. If the zucchini, the female, 
flower, doesn't get pollinated, the zucchini starts to grow, then it gets a brown tip and shrivels up. And your plant's going to send up female flowers, male flowers. You have to have both opening, the flowers opening at the same time to get good pollination. And we can just break this zucchini off. So right now, I have two. We're going to have a ton of squash and zucchini. So getting back to pruning, there's two plants in here, straight neck yellow, dark green zucchini. If you're managing just two plants, you can let these go. You don't have to over prune them. I like that I'm in here now, I'm opening up the space. We'll do some basic leaf pruning. Here's another squash that wasn't pollinated. Sometimes we get overburdened with having to prune your plants. You'll hear things like prune for maximum production and stuff like that. Well, I don't know of any more production than letting all three of the vines that it's naturally putting out produce. The whole goal of your plants is to grow the greenery, the leaves, get into position to bear fruit, grow mature fruit, mature seeds, reseed, reproduce. That's what it does. Let the plant go if you have space. Now, if we had one, two, three, four, five plants in here, we're going to have to start pruning for your garden. You get greater chances of disease, the bugs like to come in, you know, go crazy and stuff like that. When you have two plants, you can manage them better. It's easier to spray them, preventive spraying to prevent powdery mildew. We'll do some bottom pruning of the leaves. I'm going to leave the vines because they're producing really, really well. Let's go over to this plant. This is another dark green zucchini. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Zucchini on there. And you can see the next stem coming off, going that way. Now, I think we will prune that one just for the example of the video. This is the main stem coming up. It's gonna continue to flower. Here's an example right down there. That's a zucchini under this flower. That's gonna be a zucchini plant. There, or a zucchini. <laughs> it's already a zucchini plant. Right there above my middle finger, that's a female flower. There's a zucchini there and a flower. This is a male flower. Just a stem and a flower. So these are gonna be in sync. The female flowers will be opening, the male flowers will be opening, and you're gonna get more zucchini and you'll have two creeping vines of your black zucchini. Again, one plant, at least five to harvest off of there right and now. And you can just twist it, and they'll just break off like that. So when you twist them, you could do sometimes damage to the growing stem. Sharp knife, 45 degree angle, sometimes is the better way to harvest. Now I just cut into a leaf when I did that. Look at these, these are beautiful. So you can also prune leaves, 45 degree angle, grab the right one, and you just pull it out. We'll get to that more in a second. I want to get all the squash and zucchini out of here, and then I'm going to rinse off the dust before I get started more. I don't want to, again, kick that dust around. That's the harvest from three plants. Again, plenty for a family of two to six. When they're smaller, they're shinier, much more tender, perfect for just cutting up, eating raw, putting them in salads. As they get larger, more towards the saute, the skin starts to get a little bit tougher, the seeds get more mature. These are great for sauteing, using them in uh, stews. If they get really big, you're gonna have to core the seeds out, but then you can use the zucchini to make zucchini bread. Great production. No pruning was done at this point to the leaves or the vines. I'm happy with that. The vine borer is a black and white moth. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a black and red, black and orange moth um, with clear wings. Comes, lays eggs on your plant. The larva dig into your plant, work its way down the stem, and then all of a sudden you see the leaves droop on your squash or zucchini plant. The larva's inside that stem, eating the insides, cutting the vine off 
from its roots and that's why you see this drooping all of a sudden happen. I'll talk about the ways that you can help manage that. All right, we have all the zucchini out. Again, I'm going to leave most of this plant vining and going in the direction at once as an example of just not needing to prune. Pruning is not a must. Okay, let's go over to the other plant. And top pruning means you're just not removing the entire vine. Let's take this leaf out. Gently. Let's take this one out. So we have the other stem coming out this way. Male flower, male flower, male flower, male flower, male flower. Female flower. That's the tip. You can cut the tip off. Now, that will stop the vine from growing this way, but it's going to leave this fruit on here. Now, typically I would let this come out maybe, I don't know, three more inches or so. Look for a couple more female squash on there, and I like to keep, you know, three to four per vine before I cut it back if I decide to prune. Two vines, this one was top prune, just helps you manage the space or manage the size of the plant if you're growing in a small space. So it's actually about six or eight hours later. When you're pruning, I do recommend pruning towards the evening. When the sun is going down, it's going to be cooler because it can shock the plant a little bit. So they can kind of rest at night and get their energy back. Because I opened up this plant, it looks a little bit funky, but that's okay. You really want to prune the leaves that are down here on the bottom that are, you know, crossed over laying underneath down there. I'm going to prune those out and show you what it looks like. All the leaves up here we let alone. They're going to spring back up. We're going to water this after I remove some of the leaves and this plant will do really really well. So we're going to take away dead leaves that are dying, that are flat on the ground, leaves that are crossing over each other and just open it up so that the leaves will stretch upward and there'll be a lot of space underneath. You can see Male flowers, there's no zucchini under the flower or squash. Again, that's how you tell the difference. And we took off the growing tip of the portion of this vine to stop it from growing in that direction. It will send out another vine. Here's a, actually, this is the vine right here is probably the main one. And then here's another vine starting and that's gonna end up going in the that direction. You could remove that right now if you want just keep these and let's just say that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to cut this off and that's going to take away a vine that would produce zucchini but it will allow us to manage this plant better and the strategy would be this one will keep growing outward producing and it will be enough harvest you know for a family of two. Hope that makes sense. So let me take away all the leaves that are down here touching the ground that are crossing over that are damaged. So squash bugs lay these shiny eggs on the undersides of the leaves. They're a little bit orange brown. I don't know if you can see those, but those are hatchlings from the eggs and they will grow to different sizes becoming a big squash bug. You want to inspect the leaves regularly, top and bottom, because the legs on the underside. When we come over here, we can see, let's see if I can get in, in there, squash bug eggs right there. And if we flip this over, squash bug eggs right there and to get rid of them you can just break off that piece of leaf you can smash them throw them away do whatever you want but you really want to keep an eye out for the squash bug eggs that's the only way to really manage them when we water sometimes I soak right here you'll see the squash bugs come out just break them the vine borer which is harder to control. You also are looking for eggs underneath. Any eggs you find under here are usually not good eggs, just get rid of them. But the vine borer, you want to inspect for that. I put dust down here. As this vine creeps out, the flowers keep following the growth of the vine. So there are not going to be any real new flowers coming out here unless new vines pop out. You can just put dust down there. That will help control the vine borer. You also want to look for entry holes and just damage and you can actually get in with a knife, cut the vine, pull out the larvae that are chewing your squash or your zucchini plant. If it's down lower to the ground, mount some dirt over the vine. The vine will root into that and you can probably save your plant. So this zucchini plant was heavily pruned. All the crisscrossing leaves have been removed. 
These leaves will come up, provide shade down there. So I would give this a drink right now of my fish emulsion that I did a lot of pruning. I would put down um, a handful of granular organic fertilizer just scattered around, lots of surface roots. That will give this uh, plant plenty of food for the next month easily. The plant will rebound. The whole key is keep this watered. Your plants in the summer need more water regularly than they do need fertilizer and fancy amendments and stuff like that. This plant should be very happy because it just continues to produce the flowers. Male and female should be, should be uh, perfectly fine for continuing to produce for the next couple of weeks. So I'll prune this one and we'll finish up here. I'm gonna take the leaves off. See all the leaves that are coming straight up? That's what we wanna keep. When we get down here, all the leaves that are warping, bending towards the ground, touching the ground, I'm gonna remove those. They're not doing much. The upper leaves will produce shade, help keep moisture down there, keep the roots cool. All the leaves down there are just really, I think, a haven more for insects and potential disease, but you don't need them. So let me remove everything off of this uh, straight neck squash. I think we'll finish up here, but I want to show you a couple of things. So this is the squash plant I was working on. Took out a lot of the leaves, allowing these the opportunity to raise up, which they will. Water this in after you're all done. If we get into here, I already put the dust down. You can see where I planted the original transplant. Vine goes this way, vine goes this way, vine goes out that way. As the vine grows, flowers follow it. So you're going to get your flower and fruit as the vine grows out that way. All these flowers will be spent, squash will be harvested. There's going to be nothing along there. If you keep dusting in there, that's how you can manage the vine borer. There's no flowers, you're not putting the pollinators at risk. The vine borer will be around this space. Other insects will be around that space. And it's just good practice, whatever insect dust you use. I use Captain Jack's. I also will use seven at times. Keep it away from the flowers. Heavy pruning in here. These are all gonna raise up like this. And then any granular organic fertilizer. When the plants are about this size, you get a nice big harvest. Just scatter it around before you, you put the water down because you want to rinse off any fertilizer that gets on the stems. And I would just lightly put the granular fertilizer around there. If you have compost, use compost. Just to show you, here's all the leaves that it took out of that space. So it's pretty heavy. Great airflow, well pruned, lots of production. Didn't take any of the vines off of this plant. I'm going to let them sprawl around for a while. If I want to in the future, I'll just top them off, let them be, harvest what I leave on there. Thanks for watching. Hope this gives you some idea about how to manage, care for, prune your squash and zucchini. Don't overthink it. There's no perfection in pruning. It's not needed if you don't want to do it, but this is just the basics to get you started. Again, thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.